up Ray Chatman. In my last video clip, we discussed the quality and the quantity of the eggs produced by ladies per menstrual cycle or per IUI cycle or IVF cycles are not closely related to each other. And the quality of the egg is mainly determined by age. So in this clip, I would like to discuss with you what will be most optimal protocol for the ladies who do not make many eggs. So again, I always like to use numbers. It's easy to understand. So I divide ladies into two groups. 37 years or younger and 38 years or old. That's divided into two groups which are easy to get pregnant, 37 years or younger, and 30 years a little bit more challenged. Secondly, when I say the lady who do not make many eggs, means they only make two to three eggs each cycle, no matter how much heavy drugs you get in case of IVF. This is what we call low ovarian reserve. If you make four to seven eggs, you are okay. If you make more than 10 eggs, then you have good reserve. So, for the low ovarian reserve patients, the most important thing is go gentle. It's kind of like you driving a car. I know this may not be a good analogy, but I just want to help you to understand. If this car is with a small engine and you want to drive in fast, simply adding more gas pedal, you will not make the car run fast. And they may choke, it will stop. So ovaries are very much the same. When you give too much medicine, sometimes follicle will stop growing. And medical terms, it's called a down regulation. So give more medicine than needed. Not only waste your medicine, it becomes counterproductive. So for this group of patients, the best protocol is mainly taking oral pills, using a combination of a few birds, uh, a few different kind of pills. So typically, you will start <clears throat> with three different kind of pills, and believe it or not, you will starting with a oral contraceptive pills, which is not for the purpose of contraception, but to calm down your brain, let your egg to grow in a very friendly environment. At the same time, we can add on chlorine pills and uh, another pill called the lectrozole. And the lectrozole have another name called the femora. They work in the different position of egg production in your body, but you help to grow the eggs. And on top of this pill strategic plan, then we add on very, very minimal injections. If we need, we can take Manipure, Bravel, Folistine, and Gonaire. Practically, they are all the same. Just like you're talking about the ginger ale, Pepsi, Coca-Cola, really no difference. But how much to take? And usually, typically, you will only get 75 units per day to 150 units per day or every other day. So in the entire cycle, you're getting no more than 800 units ingestion in the entire cycle, which typically is a 10% of medicine you will get in the conventional approach, which you typically lady will take in 450 to 600 units of ingestion which is totally not necessary. If you do not make more than 6 eggs and you are getting such a high dose of medicine, as I said, repeat it one more time. A, you will not necessarily get more eggs. B, the quality will be poor. And C, you just waste lots of injections. So this is our strategic plan number one. Number two, now quality is very important. So why we do everything possible to promote the quality doing, by means of doing good plumbing, and less injection, but let the egg grow a little bit longer. But we also know, nevertheless, if you were 39, 40, 41 years old, most egg still will be poor quality and they will be genetically abnormal. So for this group patient at the age of 38 and older, we recommend that this group patient, when you got egg, we needed to do so-called due diligent analysis 
meaning that we want to check your eggs to see if we can make it to blastocystis stage embryos then we will do genetic screen so-called pre-implantation genetic screen test and I will tell you a whole story which is very exciting about PGS which completely changed I call it revolutionized the normal process of IVF and in my next video clip I'm going to discuss about what is a PGD what is a PGS what is a comparative genetic hybridization technique so called CGH and what is next generation sequencing technique so called NGS and who need who may not need it and what advantage to go through PGD why in New Hope Fertility Center we are promoting so called universal PGS and what is universal PGS why we want to do universal pre-implantation genetic screen test show me the numbers to tell me how this can improve the chance of getting pregnant and most important to reduce the miscarriage rate so again stay in tune and sit comfortably and in my next video clip we are going to address these topics thank you bye Thank you.